Hello, hello. Welcome back to Making It Up. I'm Isa. Today's topic of discussion is if I could only keep 15 makeup products for my entire collection, which makeup products would they be and why? Tougher than it seems, okay? If you're a makeup lover like me and you have a, a vast collection of makeup, it was tough, but I saw Julie Adams MUA do this video concept a while back and I thought it was gonna be a fun break for my other content. It was gonna be a fun challenge for me. It was less fun, more challenging, but still, hey, you know what? Sometimes you have to ask yourself these existential questions. What would happen if I was only allowed to have 15 makeup products? What would I keep? Why would I keep it? So if you wanna know which products I would keep if I had to scrap my entire makeup collection and only keep 15 products, Let's talk beauty. Oh, it's gotta be a journey. Let me just put these on my head. And can we just talk about this baby right here? She just wanted to be in the video and I was like, okay, fine. You can be in the video. We're just gonna roll with her, okay? Let's, let me grab my products. I'm kinda gonna wanna go in order of products as I apply them to my face. The first item is the Iconic London Super Smoother Blurring Skin Tint. I don't do a primer all the time. I kinda like my makeup prep is my skincare, so primer, is not necessary, especially if I only have 15 slots. We're going straight to the skin tint, baby. This is the best skin tint because it gets better as the day goes by. So as you wear it, it just looks better and better. This shade is a little bit light for me, especially right now because I've had a little bit of sun, but guys, I just said that and this shit matches me perfectly. Okay. Uh... Let's ignore that. But this, first of all, super easy to apply. It's very, very natural. You guys know I love natural base products, but this is natural, but it evens out the skin and it's also blurring. So if you have enlarged pores or a huge freaking breakout, it's gonna make it look a lot less dire than it actually is, but it's still gonna look very natural. Nothing else in my collection does what this does. Just, it's fantastic. I don't know why more people don't talk about it because she is just so freaking good. Not super glowy, it's more of like a satin product that it really just adapts to your skin and it's amazing, I love it. You can apply it with a brush, you can apply it with your hands, you can go in with a sponge. You can really do the most with this. Obviously, if you want more coverage, this is not gonna be for you, but for me, it is because it's perfect for every day. If I wanna go a little bit more glam, I can and just like amp up the coverage with my concealer. If I could only keep one concealer, you best believe it would be the LA Girl Pro Conceal. You guys know I've talked about this a lot. It's been around for years. It's super affordable. I think it's like $5 around that mark. It's so, so good, so affordable, and it just molds perfectly to your skin. This comes in a lot of shades so you can really you know, get this at any stage. You can even use it to contour and highlight. But as you can see, it's super easy to apply. It is a medium coverage, so it is gonna, you know, give you enough coverage, but you can really build it up if you want to. My favorite thing about this is that it's easy to build up and it's satin. So it's not gonna be super matte and chalky on your under eyes, but it's also not gonna be super dewy and like emollient. You know, it's that perfect in between. It just looks like skin. It's also a great concealer for your face. Sometimes concealers don't work for the rest of your face as well as they do under your eyes. This one really, really does. I'm gonna be applying a little bit of this to my breakout. I don't wanna like overwhelm it with product though. So we're not gonna go crazy. And then a few other breakouts right here. But it's just a very versatile product. The formulation, I don't think it has changed. I repurchased it over like five times already. And it doesn't do me dirty. It's so good. It works on many different skin types. I love it so, so much. And to be honest, most of the time, I don't even need to set this. Like it's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna get super glowy. It's just like the, that perfect, perfect formulation that is never does me wrong. So of course, if I can only keep one, I would keep the one I've repurchased the most, right? Makes sense. Now for powder, I am someone who needs a powder. I have more like normal combo skin. So powder is a must, unfortunately, because it would be like a great step to skip. I can't. I, it was a battle. It was a battle because there are a few powders that I love for certain things, but if I can only keep one that's gonna do everything for me, it's gonna be the Laura Mercier Loose Setting Powder, Translucent Loose Setting Powder. I only have a mini because I don't use this like every single day, but this is the perfect basic powder that gets shit done. It's very versatile. You can do a lot with this. You can go in really lightly 
and set and it'll set beautifully or you can bake with this because it's also um, loose and it's not like never gonna look super heavy or cakey under your eyes or anywhere else like it's just perfect for all skin types I feel like if you need just like a basic powder this is it like I'm gonna grab a little bit of this and add it to the under eyes to just bake slightly also adding a little bit here to make sure that concealer doesn't move around like it just does so much but it never looks like it's too much and that my friends is why i love 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 this powder now we're moving on to bronzer this is a really hard category i have a lot of bronzers that i really really love this one was a toughie but in the end i decided to go for the fenty cream bronzer in the shade butter biscuit i've had this for a long while and it has been a favorite for years, honestly. This, I don't think it's like my favorite, favorite, favorite bronzer ever. Like I feel like right now I'm gearing more toward other formulations, like the Makeup by Mario one. But if I could only keep one, it would be this one because again, it is very versatile. I feel like it has a lot of elements that other bronzers that I love have combined into this one. So I really love the shade. It is very neutral. It's not super cool tone, not super warm. It's very easy to apply. It's a little bit balmy, not in an offensive way. Where is my brush? Let me apply it so you can see. You can apply this with a brush or a sponge. I definitely alternate between the two. You can almost like bronze tour with this product as well. Um, but it is so easy to apply and blend. It blends like a dream. It looks very natural. It has a little bit of like a sparkle that adds dimension to the face, not in an offensive way, but yeah, this kind of like mixes a lot of what I love from other bronzing products into one. It can look very natural or you can really like build it up, which is another thing that I absolutely love about this one. And it's just like one of my most perfect bronzers bottled into one product. I also love hitting it with a sponge, like just the side of the sponge, and it'll add a little bit more of like a brushed, airbrushed feel to the bronzer. So you can apply this in so many different ways. It's a tough one. There are so many bronzers that I love, but, but I think this just encapsulates the feeling of all the other ones that I love. Blush was another nearly impossible category. Like I have so many blushes that I love. It was a hard one and this will probably change over time, obviously. But for now, I chose the Danessa Myricks Beauty Yummy Skin Blushes, Blurring Blushes. These have a super long name. I don't remember the name, but this is the shade Rosé and Brunch. I have a lot of more peachy blushes that I really love. Over the years, I've been a peach blush girl. Recently though, I did my color analysis. As you guys know, I have not shot up about it. And more rosy pink colors like this one suit me better. So this is one of the only rosy pinky colors that I have. And I feel like if I'm gonna just be keeping one, I'll be keeping the one that flatters me the most. Also, this formula, it's so good. It's blurring. I like a lot of blurring products, I'm realizing. It can be super pigmented or very light. You can definitely build it up. And it just looks so nice on the skin. I can make it look super natural or I can build it up a little bit more. Like it just does, does it for me, you know what I mean? And there's a lot of product in here. So I wouldn't run out quickly, you know? I wouldn't. It's so freaking nice. It's so easy to blend. It really blends well into the skin because it almost has that like powdery formula, but it's still a balm. So it just, oh, it diffuses into the skin so perfectly. Look at it. It's so nice. And it, you know, it's very light on my cheeks right now, but I could totally build it up if I wanted to. I don't though. I want to keep it like this. So I need to stop. <laughs> she says as she continues. Last but not least, highlighter. It was tricky for me to, to decide if I really wanted to include one or not. At the end of the day, I decided, yes, I do want to include a highlighter and it's going to be the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. It could have also been the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. They're literally the same product, but I chose this one simply because it's a little bit more affordable. It's a lot more affordable. Let's be honest. The shade also suits me better. I have the shade 2 Fair Light and this is just a very natural lit from within highlighter. You can use a little bit or you can use a lot. I tend to use very little and concentrate it in certain areas and it just looks like your skin is lit from within. I don't like a chalky highlighter. I don't like anything that's too intense. I used to back in my youth, but not anymore. I also like the fact that this is a very versatile product. 
You can use it as your primer. You can use it like all over as a skin tint if you want something very, very glowy. Like you can do so, so much with this. So it's also like a multi-use product, not just a highlighter. When you only have 15 products, you need to use this in however many ways you can, you know what I mean? But I really like it. It gives me a subtle glow. I can build it up. It does a lot for me and it's super natural, which as you guys know, I'm into the natural looking stuff. And then one thing I'm realizing cheek area wise that I didn't include and I don't have the space for, <laughs> it's my freckle pen, you guys, my freckle pen. But you know what? You can improvise that with other products, so it's fine. I don't need it, I don't need it. But if I had 16 products, I would add that, okay? Just no, just no. We're moving on to eye territory. Let's do the brows very quickly. Wasn't as hard as I thought it was gonna be for my brow filler. So if I need to fill in my brows with something, Glossier Brow Flick in the shade, this is the shade brown. First of all, this is like my perfect shade. Where is my spoolie? This to me, it's like my perfect brow product. First of all, because it matches my brow hair almost perfectly, not too cool, not too warm. It just does the most and it's also so easy and foolproof. Like if you don't know how to do your eyebrows with a pen and you feel like you're gonna fuck up a lot, this is the perfect, perfect brow pen because it's not super pigmented. To some people that's like bad because they're like, I'm not getting any product on my brows, but I am. I can be a little bit messy with it, as you can see, and I can clean it up instantly and it's like nothing ever happened. So it's very mess friendly. And I just really, really love how it makes my brows look very natural. Obviously it's Glossier. There are a lot of, of other like brow pens that have a smaller tip that is good if you want a little bit more control and if you're doing like individual hair strokes or maybe you have a sparser brows than I do. I have pretty bushy brows. I can see why that would be appealing, but to me, this just works perfectly because it's not as pigmented as those other ones. For brow gel, this was a little bit hard, I'm not gonna lie, it was, because I have a lot of brow gels that I like, but ultimately, Rare Beauty um, Lifting Gel, Harmony Lifting Gel, this is a long name as well, I don't remember it, but it is the perfect flexible, this is a flexible lifting gel, yeah. It is very flexible, you can do a lot with it, you can laminate your brows if you want to, or you can just set them, you don't need a lot of product, and why I love this is that it really defines my brow hairs so easily, like super easily. It pushes them up, it leaves them there and they're not crunchy ever. Like no crunch here, which sometimes you need the crunch, you know? Sometimes I definitely do because my brows can be very, very stubborn, but I don't want the crunch all the time and that is why this is perfect. Also, this is not a brow gel that is gonna leave dandruffy residue on my brows. You guys know I hate that when everything turns like white. So that is why I love this one as well. The next product that I think is a must, especially for me, is a eye primer. And I really love this one by KVD. This is the Shake Primer because I can use it with cream shadows or powder shadows. I really like this one. You just shake it up. It's a bi-face product. And then you apply a little bit of this to your hand and you just go in and it is, it's like watery a little bit. I want to say oily, but not in a bad way. It's just a little emollient, but it definitely dries down. It's not sticky at all, so we love that. It's clear, so you know, any skin tone can use it and it's not gonna be too dark or too light for you. And it does prolong the wear of my eyeshadows. This is just what I have and it's what I need. So obviously it's coming to the 15 product makeup bag. Now that that's done, let's move on to some eyeshadow. This was hard and it wasn't because I haven't been using a lot of eyeshadow recently, but if I had to just pick one eyeshadow product, Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes Palette, obviously this has everything I need. Warm tones, cooler tones, glitters, like there's everything here. Some people might argue that they need a black eyeshadow. I don't really need a black eyeshadow. So this is the perfect, perfect product for me. And I love it so much, it's super easy to use. I just wanna, I'm gonna do something simple. They're so easy to blend. They look very nice and neutral, easy to blend, easy to apply. They can get super pigmented if you want them to, but if you don't, you can also just apply a tiny, tiny bit of product. And it's also gonna look 
gorgeous. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of a crease moment and then apply a shimmer because why not? Shimmer is the best. And this shimmer applies so, so easily as well. And it's a little sheer. Let me just show you. Which one should we use today? I think we're gonna use the lightest shimmer, this one right here. And just apply it all over my lids. Oh, I love it. I love it. When I first got this, I used it every single day. It's just very like adult glitter. You can pack on the shimmer, glitter, whatever you want to call it. You can pack it on if you want something more intense or you can leave it a little bit more spread out and ethereal. It can get a little bit fallouty, obviously, but if you apply with your finger, it's not as bad and it's honestly not a lot of fallout compared to other shimmery eye products that I have used. But yeah, this is just so, so good. I also definitely need to bring Urban Decay 24-7 Eyeliner in Whiskey. This is my favorite brown liner. I haven't tried a ton of other, like I've tried other formulas, but I haven't bought a lot of other formulas like this one recently. So this is my favorite because it's the one I have and I use and it has not failed me yet. It will wear for the whole day until you want to take it off. I really, really love this like rich brown shade. It pairs well with literally everything because I don't do a lot of black. This is a lot less hard and you can apply this on your waterline, your tight line. It's gonna stay there forever. You can apply this to your lash line, diffuse it if you want to. It is a little bit more long lasting, so you don't have as much playtime. It's not super creamy, but if you want something that lasts, this is your friend. I feel like a brown liner is a product that everyone needs in their makeup bag. You can do so much with it. It's so easy to use. Let me flick a little bit. I love to do my little flicks. I always use this to do my little flicks almost every day. Whenever I'm wearing makeup, I'm usually wearing this and it just works so well for me. And as I said, it lasts for the whole day. You have endless endless creative opportunities with something like this. So I obviously want it in my makeup bag. I wanna add a little bit more of a smokiness to this situation. I wanna go in with this like shimmery brown just a bit. I'm just experimenting at this point, but going over where I apply the liner. Now for my mascara, it was also really hard. I'm not gonna lie to you. There are a lot of mascaras that I love and there are everyday mascaras that I love that are more natural and there are more intense mascaras that I love. So I had to pick between the two. In the end, I chose the Essence. I love Extreme Volume Mascara. If you've been here before, you know how much I love this, but also it's super affordable. I think it also comes in waterproof. Maybe it comes in brown, I don't know, but this is just a great, great mascara for volume. It makes my lashes look like falsies. It does the most. I can build it up. But if I needed something a little bit more subdued, I feel like I could achieve it as well, you know, just not go as ham. But this just does so much for my eyelashes, truly. It's a hero product. And I don't hear a lot of people talking about this formula specifically. People talked about the pink one last year, but not this one. And I feel like this one is better. Look at the difference. I mean, everyone's eyelashes are different. Everyone's needs are different. But for me, I feel like this just works. Last but not least, we have the lips. Again, a tough one, because I feel like I definitely need more than one lipstick. I need more than one shade. I could do one neutral and one bold. Didn't have enough space for that, so I had to like very much narrow it down. But first, I obviously needed a lip liner. I cannot live without one now. And I think the best, in my opinion, is the NYX lip pencil in the shade Nude Beige. This is like my perfect nude color that adds a little bit of definition and contour, but goes with everything. And it's so easy to use. I love it. Ah, oh, yeah. It just gives me enough, and I feel like I can use this with neutrals or bolds. And it works. This is just great. It's, I feel like $5. Someone said that they reformulated this, so I have not tried the new formula. This is an old one. I hope it didn't change that much because this old formula just works perfectly for me. It's not super soft or super like hard. It's the perfect waxy consistency to stay in place all day. And then for my lipstick product, this one was hard because I have one that's my favorite that is not my most flattering. But at the end of the day, I think it's the one I would choose because it's been my ride or die forever. If I could only have one lipstick, it would be Glossier Generation G and Cake. I'm almost out of it. Like I've used this a lot. It's my most used lipstick ever. I have already used one of these 
all the way through and this is a repurchase i have a backup don't have any of that with all my other lipsticks so this is the one that definitely had to be in my bag you know this is just so perfect because look at this Okay, it's that perfect like sheer blurry color. It's so gorgeous. It's also it's a little bit more peachy than I would like it to be because more pink tones suit me better now, but uh, I love it. Maybe there's another shade that I would love in this formula. I haven't tried it because this has just been like my ride or die. It's sheer, it's blurry. It's the perfect everyday lip product. It's so comfortable. I love that it's a soft matte. Some people don't like that. I absolutely love that fact. It's a very unique formula. I have not tried a formula like this anywhere else and I just love the fact that it's matte it's sheer but it's not uncomfortable mm, it's just so good last product I really debated this being another lipstick or another other product but it realistically needs to be a setting spray I do need a setting spray and the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless finish setting spray oh, I never know how to say this it's a tongue twister but this is the best it's so easy to use it doesn't leave your face feeling sticky throughout the day it really does make your makeup last it doesn't like break it down the nozzle like the mist it's perfect see it's not overly offensive. It also smells so good. I don't think I need a lot of this product to make my makeup last. I also have had this for a while, for a long time, over a year, and I'm not out of it. It's expensive, but it's worth it. Okay, trust me, your makeup will last so much more with it. I love it, so it definitely needs to go in the bag. I wish I didn't need one, but I do, and this is like the best setting spray I've tried even better than the Urban Decay one. And that is about it, my friends. If I could only keep 15 makeup products in my collection, this is what my makeup bag would look like. Can you see the size of this? There's barely any product in there, like honestly. Oh my God, that's crazy. But it was such a fun experiment. To be honest, I will never just keep 15 products in my collection, I don't think. But it was a fun challenge to like learn about these products and they're kind of like my tried and true products, if you come to think of it. So if you'd only keep 15 products in your makeup collection, which products would they be and why? Let me know in the comments below and let's talk about this challenge together. I hope this was fun and entertaining, maybe educational in a way, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you love super easy and real makeup and beauty content that you can actually relate to. Thank you so, so much for watching. I love you, I hope you had fun, and I hope to see you right here for my next one. Bye.